here today. So the first part we will go through the school district articles and then um, if the school board members and staff want to leave after that, they're welcome to do that. Um, so uh, can we go through attendance? Where's Bria? Uh, um, I think we're missing uh, Bob Megan. And pass. So otherwise we have we have a quorum and uh, we can we don't need to go through and do a roll call. Uh, so we do not. That's Bob. He, um, Megan is so he's missing as well. Yeah, but um, Paul Cass. Paul Cass. Yes, yes. What we just said. Yeah, Paul Cass. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think they said it and I didn't repeat it. Sorry. Um, we do have uh, Vern here to to answer questions on the and Seward district budget if we have them. So, um, so the first item of business will be to um, have any motions to move forward uh, on the uh, warrant articles. And so um, entertaining a motion on the first warrant article, which I believe is the operating budget. Is that, do I have that right, Emily? Yeah, second. It's the second warrant article. Oh, there's a second. I, I, I move to recommend the first warrant article as written. Motion by Emily Leach, second by Suzanne Hewitt. A any discussion? Just so everybody's clear, can we just understand that it's the operating budget that is $5,719,215? Is that? Did everybody hear that? It's for the operating budget as presented. Um, any discussion? Okay, all in favor, vote aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? That one article will then be recommended um, on the ballot from the Budget Committee. The next one article, can I have a motion? I think they're later in the packet. Is that a motion from from you, Peter, to to uh, recommend the Article Six as written? Do I have a second? Second from uh, Denise Knowles. Uh, any discussion? Suzanne. So this. So this um, <coughs> agreement came. We, we, this is the first time we see it. Budget committee. So it happened since our last meeting. So we're just kind of looking at it. Excuse me now. So I, I mean, I have some questions. I know that <clears throat> with the prior collective bargaining agreement, the school board was very interested in getting on a path of trying to uh, do more cost sharing with the teachers for their health insurance rates. And so I see that there's been no change to that in this collective bargaining agreement. So I wondered if, if our school board up could, was this a goal of the, did the school board change its plan? Could, you know, anything that you could. Uh, we have not changed that plan. Um, that is still a continued goal for the school board. Um, it did not um, work out in, this, in our negotiations. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure how much I can say about the negotiations, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable. Um, Going too far that. Is that fair? Uh, yeah. Could I recognize the superintendent to uh, answer the question for us? The collective bargaining agreement, uh, proposed collective bargaining agreement, has been ratified by the school board. It has been ratified by the union, so it is all public information at this point. So, yeah. um, in this particular round of negotiations, the health insurance has remained the same. There was no reduction in health insurance. Can I ask what? A share, the teacher share is, and how it compares with the town. And maybe Denise could help with that. In Katie, can you help with that? I could pull it up. Okay. I don't know what our expenditures are. I can give it to you Monday. So we'll wait. Oh, it's a question out of the blue. See, this is you know 
because we didn't meet, it's, it's unfortunately we get time to. <clears throat> I think I think it's eighty twenty, but no. That sounds yes. I that that is what it is. Sense, so I, it comes really, back to me. Yeah, it's eighty twenty. 80 -20. Um, just with my history with the with budget, and I was on the school board, and 
and uh, now I'm on Slickman. I, it is, it's always been the goal of the school board to try to get more money paid toward it. The difference is that the school is union and the town is not. So there isn't, when you hire an employee, this is what it is, it's a town. The union, I know from my Mr. Dame when you're negotiating, and I know what you're going through, and it's really hard once you give it to, to reduce it, you know? So I know it's always on your plate, but when you're negotiating, you're, you don't know what they gave up on the other side, you know, it's, you know because it, it could have been a bigger dollar amount that they didn't get the percentage, but they might have gotten something larger. And I know it's, it's long hours and it's a lot of work, and yeah, so and I will, should continue to make efforts. Yeah, and, and you know, I will point out that um, the 2% is the town's baseline um, yearly, uh, generally yearly, um, increase. Um, and while, yes, the school board is always looking to decrease health care costs because that really benefits the town um, far into the future, um, this does result in, you know, a 2% increase for the teaching staff. Um, so, much like the rest of the town, many of the town employees are getting. Just so that we're all on the same page, the, the town doesn't really have steps, so their teacher's getting more than 2% because there's steps built into a contract. And the only way, from my experience, and Denise can either uh, confirm that or not, the only way that the town helps rectify that is that occasionally we'll do market adjustments, so that's how we manage that. But there isn't an automatic increase for your years' experience, which, you know, is to the town's advantage when we get employees who can stay. And so. The town has the town also has a difficult time, even though they're not unionized. We're trying to keep you know, the town is trying to keep up the salaries. So again, I'll just say I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed to see it. I don't know how I'm gonna vote yet. I'm working on it in my head, but I'm disappointed to see it. And, and I don't know whether how strongly we should try to send a message, uh, but you know, and they did make some movement last year. You know, just even a little uh, would have been helpful, but it's, you know, zero percent, and so that's hard to see. Now, the teachers getting two percent, are they getting a step also? Um, so, uh, I'm not sure. Only those that qualify. Yeah, once yeah. you reach the top step, you no longer get steps, so right. it's only those teachers who aren't on step. There's no law in Jeffrey? Mm -hmm. There is, yes. Mm -hmm. So they are getting increased, increased beside the two percent? For the ones that For are certain, if, you're, if you've been here that long, it's yep. a, there's a calculation okay. of the contract. Well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Nancy. Can you just confirm, is your step um, track scale still 5% across and 5% down? I think roughly. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? I, I believe that is roughly true, yes. With, okay. the, with the increases over the years that, that have been like 2% or 1.5%. One, one but the percentage going, if, if you get more education and you haven't reached your end, you qualify for 5%. And then the years of service, you get 5%. And then after that scale, how many years is it? Yes. Is it seven? Sure. Yeah, when you go into longevity, is it seven years or five years? I don't know. It's eight years. Eight years, okay. So then you get 5% for every year. So whoever's on the scales potentially could get the 2% plus 10%. I'd have to verify those numbers. I'm not sure. Well, if you didn't change any contracts, they're, they're five and five. But so you have to be upfront and make sure that that's acknowledged as well. Because if you can't get it on your on your um, insurance, maybe your negotiation tactic should need to be reducing the scale next time. But just a thought. Mm -hmm. Again, John, new to this. But pardon me. But I'm thinking that about the larger context, and I'm listening to these numbers, and I'm very impressed with these increases. <clears throat> but I'm also wondering about the larger context, and is this were these built in to maintain teachers and to be competitive in the um, 
uh, in, in the world of you know, education in New Hampshire, are our teachers going to leave if they're you know, not paid at least relatively equal to what other teachers in there with their experience in education would be paid? I, I, I'm listening to these numbers and I'm sort of assuming maybe these were decisions made to accommodate or uh, address the, the disparity in pay by Wallens, to Wallens for teachers versus other larger communities? Uh, so I would say that our teachers are well paid um, in comparison to other teachers. <laughs> um, uh, so, so and, and let me back that up, which is that we went for many, many years where we did not have a line by pass. Um, so we had, uh, was it the year before last, if I remember correctly, that um, we made some significant adjustments to um, salaries based on the fact that um, we needed to get people up to their proper step. Because so if we don't pass a contract, the teacher doesn't get their um, their step work step change in their salary. So for example, someone who has not had a contract passed in let's say five years is missing all those steps that they would have gotten in the meantime. So we have we have recently caught teachers up to that. Um, that was a really hard time for a lot of our teaching staff. Um, and I think that while we, you know, our teachers are, are you know, on, on pace with other schools right now for their salaries, you know, we are very cognizant of the fact that this happened, and that was um, a difficult time for them. Um, it was hard for the school board also. also um, and I feel like, uh, you know, we, so, so we're, we're cognizant of not wanting that to happen again, let's say. Paris were also very underpaid, oh, and yes. so when the Paris became on their contract, Part of the union contract, it, it was helping to bring them up to where they should have been. Um, they're not on the track and step scale, scale like the uh, teachers, but they were very underpaid. Um, the other, I think, I think when the track and step program came on, our teachers were not where area teachers were. There were small schools, small budget. It was a way of getting them to be able to get. It also promoted increasing your education because it's based on uh, one your your track is based on education. So many after your masters. I mean, it, it, so it gives them yes. to be going back, just no, getting more qualified as a teacher. So that and that was the incentive. And then the other one is the year of service. But I think when this first was, it was to bring them where they should have been. Years and years ago, you know. So it's something we should still continue to work on, and you know, reducing those percentages a little bit. But I think that you still want to encourage your teachers to go back and get more education and, and to become um, more knowledgeable teachers. And for, you know, I think that's important. So one of the things in particular that makes what I'm going to do, and I'm still not sure, difficult is that the paraprofessionals are in this group, the teachers. Mm -hmm. And the paraprofessionals, I feel, are not well paid, market wise. Either. And so I may have a strong disappointment about the collective bargaining agreement with result to the medical for the uh, professional staff. The paras don't even, correct? The paras don't have any medical benefits. And, and so I realized, I mean, if I vote no on this, then there's that, you know, the 8% increase that would go to the paraprofessionals, which is, you know, a really uh, welcome thing and deserved thing. Uh, so it's, it's a difficult decision. And the other part of this is, how come they're in the same union? Because obviously the per board has agreed, but usually you don't have your hourly and your salary in the same union. But, uh, I don't. Know. I know there is a there is a, a, a lower limit on how many a lower limit on how many degrees you need it to have a unit, um, and I don't know whether we meet that criteria now. I don't know whether. <coughs> my guess is, and again, I wasn't here for five, ten, fifteen years ago. Uh, my guess is it's sheer numbers uh, that they, they didn't have enough numbers to. Yeah, I mean, 
I was on a board at the time when that was that happened, uh, the Select High School Board. It was not something that I really wanted to have them together because it, it just it is so different and right. The, the parents were so underpaid, and so the union contract um, with the percentages of the teachers union is high enough. It failed. Parents get nothing because they're part of the program. They're part of the contract. So that was a really hard thing for me because I, I didn't think that they should be together. It was their choice to be part of the school uh, teacher union. But I don't know if it was because of numbers or, or what. It, it's not just what the union, what the folks who are going to form the union, but the state public employee labor relations board has, you know, things that it looks at and it doesn't like generally hourly people mixed in with professional people because in most cases those professional people are having to have some say, maybe not direct supervision, but some say over pay increases for those who don't. You're not supposed to be part of the same union if you don't unionize. So that's what makes the, the inclusion of the Paris here is what makes it to this <coughs> Joe, so this 62,000 overall increase, does that include <coughs> the cost of living increase as well as all these other step amounts? So that's the total cost of the system. Joe, if you look at the last page of this thing, there's a nice um, breakdown. Break break and then I guess I have more copy of it. Oh. And then for the on the pie chart where we show the contractual obligations, we're receiving the benefits of 13. I think that number is a little skewed, I guess, because we are probably putting the benefits into that pool. I mean, when I look at the overall budget, this is just a comment. But when I look at the overall budget, the, the professional side, the benefit package is between 45. So I've said that before, and. And to me, that's an unbelievable amount in terms of total comp. So in, in my world, when we dealt with people before, we would produce a, to a sheet of total compensation that people have, which is, here's your base salary, here's your vacation, here's your probably no bonuses in this world, but also here's your benefit. So people can say, hey, this is my total package, and it sure looks different than a $60,000 annual the total package is probably 90 to 100,000. So I think it's some of that education that has to go on. And I mean, how long is this contract for? Yeah. But I think there's, you know, I believe that people having more of a focus and a share in their costs, especially on the medical side, they tend to be more efficient. That's the whole game of this. That's getting talked about at a much larger level. So I think it is something to look at down the road. I mean, 60000 in the scheme of things isn't that bad, but eventually it becomes real money over the years. And I think you have to try to get people a little bit more involved in ownership of their total compensation package. So are you running for school board? <laughs> <laughs> other uh, uh, questions or comments on uh, on this article? Just if, if the budget committee does not recommend and support this, what is the fallout from that? What, are the, what is the consequence to the uh, school board? And so uh, basically what it will say underneath the warrant article, it will say school board recommends and it will say budget committee does not recommend. Right. I'm assuming our influence would be great in the community, but you never know. So, <laughs> so let's say it were great and this failed to pass. What's the result of that? The result of that is that they um, continue on in their current. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? We're ready for vote. Roll call. Yeah. I already said that. <laughs> um, I'll start with the Okay, a yes right. would be to recommend um, the book, the uh, Warren article as written, and no would be to not recommend the Warren article as written. Is that clear on that? Okay, great. Um, so, Denise? Yes. Denise, yes. Angela? Yes. Emily? Yes. Paul's not here. Lynn? Yes. Charlie George? Yes. Jim Nash? Yes. Charlie? No. Uh, 
Peter. No. Uh, Megan is not here. Um, there are six guesses. I, 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 oh, I, no? I skipped over <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You were first on the list. And I thought, oh, this is a chair. This chair. I was going to use the opportunity to get on the soapbox again, which I <laughs> often want to do. So I'm going to vote yes, but I'll tell you why. It's the paraprofessionals. I cannot vote no, knowing that the paraprofessionals will not get the overall 8 something percent increase. However, I will be on the budget committee next year, so I'm hoping that we won't be this budget committee, but whatever the budget, however the budget committee is constituted next year, I'm hoping that we can have a discussion with our school board rep and talk about the uh, medical benefits piece of this. So my vote is along with it. yes. <laughs> that leaves us with seven yeses and two noes. I'll abstain. Not if it's unless it's a tie. Yeah, oh, it's a point. Uh, so the, 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 uh, it passes. We will recommend. We have a motion for Article 7. I don't think we need to consider the term. So, so Angela um, makes a motion to recommend Article 7 as written. No, that's see if Bronxford School District will vote to raise an appropriate sum of up to $23,000 be added to the regular education instead of the trust. We did the, the full budget in the first one. That's our So, uh, is everybody clear what Article 7 is? Uh, any discussion? Oh, do I get a second? Second from Emily Beach. Any discussion?
proceed with this warm article. <laughs> 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 I'll do it in time. I'll, I'll learn how to do it. I'm guessing that you know what you want, how you vote. Yeah. Um, so, is, this, is there a second? Um, a second from Denise. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Discussion? Suzanne. So, so if I listen to the, the professionals who have been involved in all of this, there apparently is no educational benefit to this. So some students will do better at Marshall, some students will do better at have done at Rollins Grade School, and so there's six of one, half dozen of the other, so there's no educational benefit to this. But there certainly is a financial cost to this of $328,000. And how much? One dollar and eleven cents on the tax rate. So, I don't see any any reason to uh, to move the sixth graders now. There may be, you know, space needs and whatever in the future, as, as we've been told. But at the moment, I, I see no reason to do, do this, and I'm really not going to recommend this. I have a small comment, and, and I think that whether or not it's a benefit is is somewhat of an opinion. Some people feel very strongly there is a benefit. Some people feel strongly there isn't a benefit. Um, I, like you, Suzanne, I've, I've kind of heard logical uh, explanations of it on both sides. They both have valid points, but it's a wash to me. I think you said know, it's sort of six of one, half a dozen the other. So I, I just want to make a point that some people feel very strongly that there is a benefit. Um, so um, with that, uh, is there any other discussion on this article? I think just for people to realize is that the marginal cost of sending a new student who comes into town to Marshall is 11 grand. The marginal cost of that sixth grade student staying here in Rollinsford is almost nothing. And that's why the difference in this cost here. So this is very much a linear cost. You can send 20 students, it's going to be 20 times 11 grand. You can send 25, it's there, versus being able to spread it. So, it's, if we're looking at it from a financial standpoint, we have to look at those numbers. Any other discussion? Okay, with a voice vote on this one. Do a roll call. Yeah, let's do a roll call. Okay. Yes, will mean, um, yes, good point. A yes would be to recommend, a no would be to not recommend. Um, Suzanne? No. Uh, Denise? No. Uh, Angela? No. Emily? No. Paul, it's not here. Lynn? No. Charlie? No. I'm oh, sorry. Charlie, I should have. The same vote.
Any other questions related to the school district budget? Okay. If, 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 if the school board and, and district members want to, representative want to move on, that's, if you're welcome to, to do that, I want to say you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
well, that can't be their public hearing because they need to have a public hearing because they're borrowing money and it has to be within that time frame. We're proposing. So normally we would have a, we would deliberate and we would recommend um, a budget usually after a hearing so we've heard what the town has to say about it. Excuse me, could we have you guys move outside um, and have your conversation because we're having hearing problems. Thanks.
So the, the dates that you've given us are, are they the early part of your window or the latter part of your window? They are between the February 21st and February 20th. Yeah, but the Sixty and twenty-five. Yeah, is that towards the early part or towards the late? Sorry, the this is towards the early part. It, it is okay. Well, February twenty-first through twenty-fourth is when they're looking. That's not the window. That's yeah. the right, sort of like the window that the water sort of like would like to present to us. I'm sorry, I quote stand correctly. The fourteenth and the twenty-first. That's what we're looking. Those are the window, that's the window that you, in which you would like to schedule that. But the, the 14th is earlier than the 60-day window if you're using March 17th as your annual meeting date. I'm if you sorry. take March 17th and subtract 60 days from it, it you somewhere in the latter part of January. 18th, January 18th. So okay. the 14th is like prior to that 60-day We're talking February. 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 <coughs> sorry. Got it. But we want to have our public hearing on the budget at the same time have the hearing on the borrowing, so for efficiency's sake. Should we just see how we think about the 15th February, which is Saturday, 5 o'clock here? Is that... So, um, I guess we're proposing to have a meeting the 15th of February, February to um, deliberate over and recommend. Well, no, that's, the, that's the hearing. That's your hearing? So you, <laughs> Our public hearing it's a uh, public hearing on the annual budget, and then there is a public hearing. semantic thing. It's not that the budget committee is going to present the budget. We will probably likely turn it over to the water right. district commission, right? But the budget committee will present the budget and then uh, and they will close that meeting. John will close that meeting. Then the water district will open up the bond hearing. Okay. That will be closed and then we will re-meet to right. do our recommendations. Right. Right. And where is the location going to be? Uh, I was thinking that the Legion, the word from you were very nice place. Is it large enough? Or? Oh, yes. Well, it's a budget meeting, so we can tell. Yeah. 
um, yeah, it's up to us to decide. It is, but I'm, I'm open to that. Open to that or well, I just want to any... check this, this building schedule while he was still here. That's why I'm asking. So are we going to go? Sh shall we? Shall we check to see if the Legion is available? Um, I will. And then, and then, if that's not, we can see all what the alternatives are. Okay. And, and if you follow up with me, Vern, I'll. I'll okay. I'll, sure. I'll, I'll check with Cheryl. Carol, just and reserve the review. Is that the one on the other side that you're not? Yeah, yeah, the bigger one. It holds 200 people. Oh, so. okay. 200 okay. things. Yeah. Yes, and it's handicapped accessible. Yeah. And there's a bar right downstairs if that makes any difference. That could be helpful. Yeah. Huh? There's a bar in there too if you want it. Okay. I'm going to allow for you to push that. Let, let's, let's move. That. So that's. That's what we're, we're going to meet at 6 o'clock p.m. on the 12th um, for a public hearing, and we'll work, work on the advertising once we're sure on the I'm sure on the location. Um, now, the reason that we waited to bring the uh, water sewer district budget forward to a public hearing was just that there weren't there were still questions, and there was nobody at our meeting to answer the questions. So um, right now, I'm entertaining questions. Um, on the water and sewer budget that's presented. Angela, do you have some questions? I have a lot of questions, but they are precipitated by the meeting on Wednesday night, and so my budget questions have to do with changes that seem to happen on Monday night. If people had questions about the budget prior to, no, I'm sorry, not Monday, Monday, but Wednesday this week, if people had questions on the budget prior to that meeting Wednesday, it might be helpful for those questions to be answered to Do we have fresh copies of the budget as it currently yes. the same as it was before. What's the before? The one you... I emailed you showing the amount of this. You by the vote of the district. Well, we have it. Yeah, we have it. Yeah, Here's one. Eight. Oh, eight. eight. Oh. No, that's not what I mean. No, right? You got the no. wrong one? Thank you for trying. It looks like this. See, it says reduced by. Well, I'll go ahead then since nobody's jumping in. Um, so, there was a meeting of the district on Wednesday night, and a number of transactions occurred that have impact on this budget. So, I want to start there. Um, first of all, I noticed that there is a $4,000 increase in the administrative line item of your budget. That was there in the previous at the previous meeting. It's the budget that we had: Are you two thousand water, water two thousand sewer, total four thousand. Are you talking Ta water or sewer? I'm talking both budgets right now. Total increase of four thousand. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Which line? Are, are I'm talking about the administrative pro share rate of administration. What number? Uh, I don't have a number. It's down the bottom. It's at the bottom of the page, just before the bottom line. 2019 is 25,529 water, of which we're on, water. And for 2020, 2020, 27,500. So it's actually $2,000 increase there, and $2,000 increase on the sewer side, same, same numbers. So in total, a $4,000 increase to the administrative line. And it, it, what, it became clear on Wednesday that the, there's an impact, potential impact of a new position that the, the commissioners, not a new position, a new staff person that the commissioners added on Wednesday night. An interview that took place at the start of the meeting and uh, when we reconvened, there was a new person uh, added to the uh, staff at uh, the Water Sewer District. So, it wasn't clear to me. Uh, duties were moved around. The clerk lost all responsibilities for administrative responsibility, for no. example, and the treasurer's responsibilities were changed somewhat. So it's confusing to me what is happening with staffing at, um, in relation to this budget at the water sewer uh, district. And in total, a $4,000 impact to this budget, which at the time, when we were first deliberating on this budget, it was not really clear where that 4000 was, but now it seems it may be related to this new staff person no. who was um, 
The, okay. Well, okay, I'll let me pause there. Okay. Uh, because uh, it appears duties have been removed and... Uh, Wages and, and benefits there's on the personnel line, which is line 47. Line 47. 37. 37. I don't see where 37 is. You may have an older version. Can you tell what's the what's the it's called the pers line uh, personnel expenses? Personnel expenses are up here. So this is the one you emailed to us. No, I think he, I think after he yeah, emailed, yeah. presented another one. I see. So you took three thousand four hundred dollars out of that line and eliminate. I, I'm just if you're looking at one question, maybe one thousand. I'm looking at the the latest one that I'm we sure have. So this is why it would have been really nice to. Have with copies for all of us because people are look the one email and this one and that one. It is if this is the one we should probably try to make copies of this. Let's make sure you have the right one. Does it have line? How would we know? Is this the correct thing? That one's right. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Well she just borrowed it from my start. Yeah, what? So what is the top share? Uh, how many? Line, uh, well, it's going to be used for supplies, equipment, things that are administrative costs. Uh, if there was, I'm trying to remember the details because there's a lot of detail in it. So there's 4,000 added yeah. in total, 2,000 water, 2,000 sewer. Yes. I thought that that had some sort of personnel relationship no. because I was looking at admin as a personnel uh, task. But it, none of that is included there. Personnel no. is not. Okay. So um, I may have it wrong, but I know that some responsibilities shifted on Wednesday night, shifted away from staff who are currently employed by the district. I don't know where those duties are going to land. Uh, perhaps that's one question in this budget. Hmm? I can't. I guess I did ask a question. Is, are you asking a question as to whether that changes the Budget line item, yeah, which is the salary. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, the, so yes. is there is there a change to the salary based on the changes that were made right. pretty, pretty recently? Basically, right. is is this actually what would be the cardinal? And yes. where might, might we find that information in the budget? Uh, some of this stuff has to do with personnel actions, which are confidential. And yeah. about it. You hired a new person. So the where net is that? cost is the level. The net cost is level. So was that publicly, was that position uh, a public, done in a public way? Was there a notice about that? Certainly. Certainly. Can I raise a question? I, I think some of, this, some of this conversation, and I know that there are serious issues that, that really affect people, but some of this conversation seems perilously close to governance issues, which are really not the purview of the budget. I see it as um, trying to understand the budget in relation to but whether they held a public um, you know. Okay. It's, 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 yeah, I think if we can keep the question specific to the line items on the budget, it is. Okay. So my other question has to do with um, whether or not you will fill a position this year that has been vacant for about seven months and how that position is uh, going to perhaps change the bottom line if that position is filled. There's been a big issue in um, the sewer district. We are looking, we have candidates. We have at least one who is good. Beyond that, I can't talk about it. It's personal. That's reflected in this budget. Yes. Can you, can you just reconfirm? You, you hired an additional person to your staff. How is that? How is that being absorbed, and where is it being absorbed? You have an additional. You, you didn't let anybody go. You have an additional position that you hired, which you did not budget for for the new year, correct? Well, this person takes over functions that people in the past had. But the people who had that in the past have, have been transitioned to another line item, which is operational. So whatever changes of previous employees doing some of these functions, 
that money is going to another position which will not increase the budget. So you're not the, spending the, the any more. The function is changing. The person is still there. On the two, the two other ones. The two people that we are changing made, their jobs are still there. We've made some changes in responsibilities. Yeah. The net cost is, is net even. But you've added a person. Yes. And so where are, where are the funds coming from in the budget? Personnel. That, Within what you had, yeah. and there's no, it will not go over enough. Okay. Right. So, so did you have this in mind when you first presented this budget, and that's why they're already here? No, I guess that's the. We, we had it in mind, and when we, uh, I'm trying to stay on this side of confidentiality, but when we discussed how we would handle this in the future, we had to be mindful that we could not, we should not exceed the budget in that area. And so we did not. But none of this discussion, if I'm hearing correctly, when this it was, all, it was, it was already here. So there's nothing that was done that changes this. No, nothing. No, no, no. Okay, thank you. Can I just get a clarification? The only place we're going to see personnel expenses in this area is in the Expenses. Yes. You don't have a separate line. You don't have salaries and wages and then benefits. No. It might make next year it might be nice to yeah. try. Yeah, that's a little difficult. You have a very small. Oh, okay. Amount. All right, good. You can, got it. What you cannot do is you cannot say if it's a family plan or a two-person plan or or a single plan because it identifies an individual. But you can say they you offer benefits. You have to say that because it's part of the budget. But you just can't identify what benefits you're offering. And because he has such a small staff, you would be able to identify that. And I understand that part of it, but you can say you're offering benefits. Okay. Yes. Okay. Charlie, good question. Yeah, Bern, can you explain on the sewer budget uh, the two maintenance items, 20 and 21, maintenance and repairs? I, I, I think we talked about this the last time. That is, <clears throat> there's a definitional problem between capital improvement and maintenance and repairs. And this is one of the things we're going to address. Maintenance and repairs are things that do not substantially change equipment, lines, so forth. It's repair, like doing an oil change. Yeah. That's maintenance. Okay. If you put a new engine in a car, that's a capital improvement. And the problem was people were sort of slipping between the two. Okay. You know, if you took a valve out, a major valve, yeah. and you reseated it and got it all rust, they call that a capital improvement. Well, it isn't. It's a maintenance and repair. Now, if you took the valve out and replaced it with a new valve, it's a capital improvement. But getting that definitional understanding across is just was very hard. For the bookkeeper. Yes. But that's changed now. We're 
you're going to watch more closely, let's just say. Because, I mean, does the bookkeeper get the input from the commissioners, or is it just they get it take from, a chart of accounts and... They get it from the superintendent, they get it mostly from the superintendent. And we need the administrator to understand they report to us and categorizations that are determined by us. Understanding debits and credits and approval accounting, that's a whole different department. So I have another question about legal fees. Are you anticipating any kind of response that may increase the uh, legal liability in the district from the, the decisions made uh, on Wednesday and the transitions in, in uh, staff responsibilities? Essentially, people. Um, perhaps bringing action against the commissioners? I mean, I'm, I, I'm asking that as a serious question. Yes, I, I, right I now, 20,000 20, is budgeted for legal, expen uh, legal expenses. And that increase happened because you keep saying there are these personnel issues yes. that, of course, are confidential and cannot be publicly discussed. Are you expecting or anticipating any kind of reaction in terms of personnel response to the decisions that were made? Is that the end of the question? Oh, no, certainly it is. We never know who might decide, actually it happens to every human being, you never know when you're going to get sued, okay? It may be for a totally frivolous reason, but you have to be prepared to defend yourself. <coughs> and if you have a situation in the past <clears throat> where someone was frequently threatening suit, you want to be aware that that could occur again. So you prepare for it. And that's the line, it's currently $10,000 on each side, order 10, sewer 10. <clears throat> yes. In, in sewer, it's not in sewer. sewer. Oh, yeah, just okay. In water, water. it's yes. 25. No, it's. Yeah. So you're just budgeting for it in case it comes up? Yes. That's all it's going on. Well, it's, it's realizing that there is a risk and one must prepare for that risk, like why you buy homeowner's insurance. Well, we're buying legal insurance. I think the question is more whether you think you might exceed the line now. Well, I mean, either I I hope not. I hope not too. That was a great um, So, you don't have any history for the legal line? Um, do you have an idea of. Well, it was in other professional services, which are kind of like line six on sewer. Do you have any idea what portion of other professional services you spent on legal in 2018 or 2017? No, I have to look it up. It's not, it wasn't that much. Right. Because a jump from 500 to 10,000 is crazy. Right. Yes, it was. But it was also a change of the superintendent. Um, um, commissioner. 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 Right. So, it all. Yes, yes. Knowing being on the school board and knowing what would happen if we had a many thousand percent increase in the line mm -hmm. item, I just feel. But, like the school, you don't know that a child with some rather profound special ed needs moves into town. You don't know that, but you have to prepare for it. We do, and we have fun for that. Yes, but you prepare for it. We do, absolutely. Yes. It's just striking that the preparation was less than 3500 back previously, and now it's 10000 Well? 20000 
there's an, uh, there's an instrument out there that you're paying yes. on a bond. Not having heard anything about plugging before on this, I just didn't know. Wait. I don't think we talked about it. If we did, I missed it. Um, but uh, what your uh, bond is on that? That's just that you're making that principal of interest. What's that? That's just that year's work. Right. That's not the total. Well, I know. I know. I see 217, 218. Pretty much the same right across the board. But, uh, when does that bond expire? When does that bond It's one bond. That one is 2030, 2033. Long time. Is it the same bond just um, on each on these? No. One is a sewer, one is specifically a sewer. There's another one that where we redid all the water lines in the downtown. That's another one. So which and is the one that goes till 2023, please? Or do they both go to 2030, 2033? No, one goes to, one goes to like 20, I'm off the top of my, like 2027 or 2029, something like that. Because when you go to RDA and you go to Bond Bank, I just, wanted, think, I just wanted to know when they expire, that's all. Well, one of them is finally paid off this year. Uh, yeah, 2020, the final payment. That was from DES. It was for upgrades to the forty bucks, about ten thousand plus dollars. So there's more than two bonds. Well, I, so I'm getting all. So one bond expires in 2033, let's say. Another one maybe 2027. And now there's something else that has a final payment next year. Yes. So there are three. Yeah, well, there's three debts. Yes. Okay, two bonds and a. Yeah, yes. a long, long. Okay, thank you. Well. It's, and they're all represented in those two lines on each of these things, on lines. You know, capital, the principal of the interest, 26, 27. Yeah, I've done it now. Thank you. One was the collection system, one was the plan. Wastewater. It wasn't. It was for Port Wells. 
usually don't start paying right away either, so. We would start, we're proposing starting with the first 2020. Okay, so that's the prorated interest cost? That's an annualized principal and interest expense, 43000 So the estimated cost for this budget, though, is, is as a prorated part of that. If right. you're only going to start paying interest in November or thereabouts, and this is an annualized fee, then you're just paying two twelfths roughly. Right. Now, we also want to do a capital improvement savings, like the school does, like the town does, of 25000 that will go to the trustees and trust funds. So will that be a warrant article? Yes, it will. There, okay, so there will be a warrant, another warrant article. Yeah, actually, there will be a warrant article for 25000 for school. So I'm, I'm so focused on just the operating budget, I apologize. And just to, just to clarify, when, when we went and voted to bring the town budget forward, we still didn't have the warrant articles necessarily sorted mm -hmm. out yet. Not the best ideal, but. Well, if we're going to vote on the operating budget, then we need to know what that amount is in the operating budget. It's really not clear to me what's warrant. Yes. Warrant. yes. And as a matter of fact, that interest, that 45000 should be up there in the operating budget to be told within the operating budget. Well, well you've just asked another question. You, uh, it, it's subject to vote. So we start. Well, it's all subject to vote, Vern, but nonetheless, the interest that you're paying is part of an operating budget. Yes, and so it should be up there. You could give it another line, you can say whatever you want to call it, proposed, but it needs to be part of the operating budget. So, which gets me back to my question. What, if we, what is the number that we're voting on for an operating budget? 413,870. Oh, budget. That's not an operating budget. That's not the operating budget. That is the operating budget with those two warrant articles included, which when you pass the warrant articles, they become part of the operating budget. Yes, but there's going to be one warrant article that says operating budget within amount. It does not include the bond, and it does not include any, the capital improvement. What is that what is that amount in that particular warrant article? Because that's what the budget that we're bringing forward has to, to be able to distinguish. Line 38 in water and line 39 in sewer. 345-508 for water and 377-077 for sewer. And then combine the two for a total operating budget. I think what you're saying, Susan, is that um, when these warrants pass, there's going to be an operating component of the operating budget that is the principal interest that would be added to the only if they're passing. I understand that. No, but so, so, so the number, this number doesn't include that, what you're saying. What I'm saying is that if we are not moving forward with the operating budget of 345500 for water, it's that plus two twelfths of the of the, of the anticipate. Now, granted, it may not pass, but that's that's the what the operating budget is that we're bringing forward. And you for would agree plus the twenty five thousand for the capital. No, that that will be a separate. That's a the, separate warrant. Article. That's it's, a warrant article. Yeah, but if it passes, it would be the full part of the operating budget. Yeah, that's how we just did it with the school. Yes, but the but the okay. okay. twenty five will add to that. Right. So, but even though it's, you have to anticipate because that's that's there, and so the two twelfths of that annualized interest yep. should be up there as a line in the operating budget. No. But that's you did the very warrant. same thing when you did the town budget. You kept them separate, and it even says in the warrant article, not including items in separate warrant articles. It says that in wording. So you have to start with the operating budget, three forty-five five away. And then you have warrant articles for capital improvements and warrant articles for capital reserve. All right, I stand corrected. And then if they all pass, they so, all go up all the outward. All right. So, all right, so now what we're voting on bringing forward is a water budget of $345,508 and a sewer budget of $377,077. Sorry for the confusion. I apologize. Yeah. Thank you. That's helpful. Thank you. Would you like to do those separately? I'm not being fine. So is that a motion? I so moved. So moved. <laughs> I second. Uh, thank you.
fix that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, any discussion? Okay, and we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Sorry. And we're, and the, we'll the motion go around is, if that's okay. Uh, can, could you just repeat the motion? Uh, the, motion is, the motion is to bring the Water, the water and sewer district budgets, the water being 348508 and the and the sewer budget being 377077 forward to a public hearing for presentation on the 12th of February. Uh, and so that's, that brings it forward and then we will, we will meet and convene after that hearing, consider public input, and then public to recommend or not. Sorry, yes, yes. All, all the articles that have a, a, a cost. So, any more discussion? All in favor of bringing it forward to the, the hearing, say, oh, we're school call, sorry. We're going to do Joe first. Anyone in favor? Yes. Denise? No.
revising your accounting. And maybe that will clear up the presentation, but the inconsistencies made it very confusing this year. And uh, if you could carry all of our suggestions forward with the presentation next year, I'm sure we'll all feel much better about it. My hope is that there will be much clearer uh, budget presentation. There's a lot of inherited misinformation and miscategorization here that has to be cleaned up. But it will be cleaned up for next year so that we can count on the first presentation and understand it. And if we have to do any well, revisions, it'll be consistent, right? Okay. okay. I'll, I'll do my best. Remember, I don't have an administrative assistant and I don't have an SAU to provide me the backup. I have to do this all by myself. You can do it. Um, you understand it. And you uh, understand it probably better than any of us could because you spent so much time on it. But it isn't coming through the first time the way I got it. the school budget did. <laughs> so um, with that, I would ask if there's any other business. And So our snow day was supposed to be February 11th. Does it for... be to snow day? No, I think it was on it's your. It's on your yeah, but it's not ours to schedule. It's not ours to schedule. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the date that we have for uh, a snow day that we have. Ah, here it is. This that you sent out to us, the yes. snow date for various things. So right now we have a. Deliberative session for the town meeting scheduled for the, the 8th of February, right? right. What, what Suzanne's saying is we, we, we had it there for our informational purposes. Yep. That's not for us to no, set. Okay. So, so we should... That would be ours. Yes. Yeah, so we, wait. Board, yes. Be? So the snow date right now yes. is, is, is the 11th. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll come. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> any, other, uh, any other business? Ready for a motion to adjourn? Second. I second. All in favor?